Yeah, wonderful job. I appreciate Miss Nikki filling in today for Miss Rebecca. Uh, right now we're going to have our Master Club director come, and he is going to uh, begin our Master Club awards time. Brother Alex Harris, he's been doing this for quite a few years now, for several years. I appreciate him so much doing a wonderful job, and I know that you all appreciate all that he does for us. And he's going to come, and he's going to lead us in this award ceremony. Right. So welcome to our awards night. Uh, I did want to say thank you to all you parents who uh, who made it tonight. We thank you so much for coming. Uh, we thank you also for uh, for sending your kids and trusting us to <laughs> to take care of them uh, while they're here. But um, it's been a, a really really good year. I think I say that every year, uh, and it's not a lie this time. Uh, we we had a really good year. You know, I really I think I said this last year too, but we really haven't had any any major behavioral issues or anything in quite a while. I don't know if that's a testament uh, to the children, the parents, or if we're just that intimidating. I don't know what it is, but, uh, but we've had a, a lot of good, uh, good few years um, here recently. And, uh, and we've had several saved. Actually, one was, uh, one was saved our last uh, actual night where we actually had like book time. We had our picnic last week, but uh, we had one saved uh, uh, the week before that. And so Amen. we praise the Lord for that. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, what these kids learn through this program is quite impressive. I, I was telling Brother Jason about this uh, before, uh, before the service started. Uh, this, this curriculum is not an easy curriculum, uh, what they have to, especially when they get up into the junior program. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that, that, that they learn and that they go through that's really uh, quite intense. And so... Uh, I, you know, I wish I had something like that when I was growing up and coming up through, uh, through church. And so I do want to say thank you, uh, parents, once again. Thank you, church, for uh, praying for us all year um, and, and for allowing so many people to be, uh, be involved in this ministry. We had several volunteers and several uh, workers that, that were able to um, take part in it. Uh, just kind of a description of what we do. We have uh, every night, we, we always started with the primaries and up. That's first uh, first grade and up, we'd start out in the gym and we'd have an opening assembly and then we'd break off into our separate classrooms. We would have a, uh, a, le a Bible time. Uh, everybody had a Bible time where we had a lesson. You had a teacher that was able to uh, present a Bible lesson. And then we had our, our book time as well where we went through the different curriculum uh, for each grade that was uh, required for them. Um, and then we also had game time. That was everybody's favorite time, wasn't it? Game time was the funnest, right? Uh, but we enjoy, the, we enjoy having them uh, here. I do want to say a special thank you to all our, uh, our bus workers. Um, I, had, I had them all listed out here. Uh, I know I got Brother Chris, uh, Miss Rose, Brother Mark, Brother Blaine, Brother uh, Kevin, Brother Travis, Miss Leslie, Ben, and Aaron uh, Trumbull. They also rode with us. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, the, there was a lot of people that, that uh, pitch in to get these kids here. And I just want to say I appreciate you guys um, taking the extra time to be able to do that uh, and get them kids, get the kids here um, to uh, to club each each Wednesday. I uh, also, also want to say a special thank you to our leaders, um, our our substitutes. There were several substitutes where people had uh, you know uh, emergency situations, whether it be a death in the family or they were sick or uh, whatever, uh, different things where we had substitutes, helpers, and people that just filled in. The gap, and that's what I love about this church. Is there's usually never a uh, a lack for workers. Uh, we are a working church. When we when we ask for volunteers, we tend to have those volunteers um, pretty readily available. And so I appreciate that about our church. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who did help. Um, at this time, Brother Cody, do we have our video presentation? We're going to show a video, just a little bit, um, uh, some different pictures and things throughout the year. Uh, I do. I'm, I am going to go ahead and brag on my child. She's the one that put this together. Tanley put this together. Uh, I could probably have done it, but it wouldn't look near as as, as good and near as pretty, and uh, wouldn't have been as as creative. So, uh, if he has that, we'll go ahead and play that.
my favorite part of Master Club is doing things and learning about Jesus and helping friends get badges. <laughs> I forgot. Learning about God? My favorite part about Master Club is learning about Jesus. You like the picnic, okay? Linky? I like playing too. Okay, good job. I thought that was well done. Very nice. Uh, I don't know who all those goofy guys were, those adults playing with the kids <laughs> in the gym. I don't know who those guys were. Uh, we had a lot of fun, though, and um, we had some serious times, too. Like I said, we had several that were saved this year, and um, it, it's good to have fun in God's house, and it's, it's also good to get serious, too. Uh, you can cut up a little bit, but we, we have, uh, there's a lot of good things that, that were taught to these kids. And so at this time, I'm going to ask the, uh, the little lambs to come on up. Do y'all have a song? I think they have a song ready, and they're going to go ahead and do their awards, and then they're going to jet on back to their... Uh, to their classroom because it might be kind of wild for them in a little bit. But they're led by uh, Miss Sarah, Miss Stephanie, and Miss uh, Wendy. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Hey, We've had a great year. Um, we're missing a few this evening. We've usually run about uh, anywhere from 10 to 10 to 14, somewhere in there. Um, we've had a, a great bunch of kids, lots of lots of energy, and uh, we have enjoyed the year. Um, we've especially uh, enjoyed as as for so many years uh, working with Stephanie Bird um, as, as we work together to teach. And uh, she's had a rough year with things trying to help with her family, um, with her brother and everything. But whenever she's been here in town, she's been faithful and helpful. And I know it's been a, a strain, but we're, th we're so thankful for her. And then I've been thankful for um, Wendy this year as she has stepped up and helped us. And, um, you know, I can tell she just has a love for the children and a lot of patience. And, um, you know, she's just such a blessing to uh, to work with and um, just gets right in there and uh, does what needs done. And I'm so thankful for her. This year we've learned about um, just... Um, you know, a lot of basics. We've got to start with the basics with the little ones, but they've learned about creation and how God made the world, how God made them, and God made them unique, um, about Jesus, about the Bible and the importance of the Bible, and um, about prayer. And so we learned the song Whisper a Prayer and some other ones, and then some different character qual qualities that we want to instill in them. Um, most of the kids um, we've had the entire year very faithful. Um, so a lot of them got attendance awards and finished the book as well as, uh, you know, earning, earning their badges. So um, I'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and, and list the awards. So children, Miss Wendy is going to give you your award and then stay in your spot, okay? All right. So um, the ones who completed the book, we had several. And our first one is Silas Cofield. So yeah, it's both things. <laughs> He's hiding down here. And Charlie Garcia. OK. 
Okay. Then Graham Harris. Lincoln Hooper. Mia Bella Perez. Katie Radford. And Noah Reynolds. Okay. And then we had some others who um, didn't get to come quite as much and didn't quite complete their book, but they, um, they did earn quite a few of their badges. Uh, four of those aren't here tonight, but Gabriel Rios um, earned almost all his badges and did a great job whenever he was here. Um, we also have um, some attendance awards for those who um, were here just about every week. They might have had a sickness or something a, a week or two, but they were here just about every week. And those are Silas. And Graham, Lincoln, did I put them out of order? <laughs> Mia Bella, and Noah. Thank you all for praying for us and uh, holding us up in prayer uh, through the year. We know that if the, the rest of the church wasn't supporting uh, Master Club and holding us up in prayer as you come in here every week for prayer meeting, then we couldn't do what we did. Thank you so much. I think they're, I think they're going to go ahead and go back on to their classroom. <laughs> All right, now at this time, I don't think everybody's expecting this. At least the kids aren't. So uh, I'm going to get all from the from first grade through sixth grade. Y'all stand up. I'm going to get y'all to come and line up behind me over here, and we're going to sing a song together. These are my two special helpers. They're going to help us sing, sing the song. Y'all right. oh. know the song we're singing, right? We sing it every week. Ready? Lord, we I'm going to let the, the first graders stay up here, okay? Everybody else, if y'all will go back to your seat, then we'll call you up by grade here in just a minute. <coughs> All right, so we had for our first graders... Um, Miss Anna McNeese, that's weird to say still, 
Miss Anna McNeese and Miss Kathy Cox uh, both uh, uh, helped in that class. Um, Miss Kathy couldn't be here, so Bailey's going to help uh, Anna hand out her awards. Wow, okay. This is the biggest class I've ever had. I think I ran about 8 to 10 every night. These kids are amazing. I love them so very much. I'm not going to lie, we had some rough spots throughout the year, okay? Some mental breakdowns, but it's okay. We made it. Um, first off, I want to say thank you to my helper, Miss Kathy. She is not here tonight, but that is okay. Um, last year, I completely forgot to thank her, so I wrote myself a note this year because I felt so bad all year. So um, most of my kids completed their whole book. So they had five main badges, and then they had three extra badges that, were, that they could complete once they did their first five. I think I had almost, I think all eight of my pretty faithful ones completed their whole book, and then we had some throughout the year that came and went. Um, but these kids are so amazing. I absolutely love them. They come, they are so faithful, they work hard, they are respectful, they listen, it's, it, they're amazing. So um, we have, I have plaques for them that have their badges on them that they get to take home. Um, so we're gonna start with JC. JC finished, JC came in later in the year. She came in with about eight weeks left and this girl, I mean, she busted it. She got through her whole book she got through all five of her main badges. She didn't quite get to her extra ones, but she got all five of her main badges done and she knocked it out of the park. I'm so proud of her. So we have JC. Okay. That's great. Okay. And then um, the next ones completed their whole book, so all eight of their badges. We have Aiden, Raya, Lucio which his name is Nicholas, but he told me halfway through the year that he wanted to change it to Lucio. So, <laughs> so Lucio, <laughs> Mazer, Elijah, Nick, Brandon, Liam's not here, and then we have Santiago. And like I said, we have some that are not here tonight that did complete their whole book. Um, and then I have, they're not here. And then we have certificates for those that did complete their whole book. So, just down the line again. I have J uh, Aiden, Amen, Aiden, Raya, Amen. Lucio, Mazer. Elijah, Nick, Brandon, and Santiago. And then I have one perfect attendance award. Um, this child came every single night. He was so faithful, whether he felt good or not, which sometimes he probably should have stayed home, but that's okay. I'm glad he came. Um, it is Lucio. I want to say thank you to the church um, for your prayers for this ministry. This is my third year um, helping, my second year teaching, and it just gets better every year. Um, and I also want to say thank you to the parents that are here um, thank you for letting your kids come. Thank you for letting me teach them, and thank you for letting me th uh, be an influence in their life. Sure. Oh, and I also forgot. I have one more. Um, Giselle, we have Giselle. She came um, sporadically throughout the year. She still worked very hard. She didn't quite complete um, any badges because she worked on them here and there, but we have a participation award for Giselle. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. While they go back to their seat, um, Miss Anna and Bailey are going to stay up here. And uh, if we can have our, our second graders, our second graders can come on up. Good job, 
Miss Bailey had this class kind of to herself. She, she didn't have quite as many this year. They kind of come in, in, uh, in waves, I guess. <laughs> they get, sometimes they had, it seemed like, goodness, it seemed like they had 12, 13 kids sometimes in that first, first grade class. So I'm going to turn it over to Miss Bailey. So I know I just only have three up here, but I actually had at least 12. A few of mine moved um, in the middle of the year. But these three are the ones that have come consistently, and Niall, but Niall's not here tonight. Um, I want to take a minute and recognize three of my students. Um, Niall, she was saved on January 31st. Um, Axel was saved on March 6th. And uh, Desiree was also saved on March 6th. So I'm very proud of these kids for, for asking me questions. A lot of kids are a little nervous to ask questions because they're sometimes afraid that people will laugh at them. But I always tell them that it's okay to ask questions. Like, Miss Bailey doesn't know everything. I don't know if I'll ever know everything. You'll never know everything. You're always learning. And I always tell my kids anytime I teach them that it does not matter how old you are that you can always do something for the Lord. So, and before I hand out the awards, I do want to recognize these three up here. Um, I'm, I might embarrass them a little bit, but Axel, he had a little bit of a difficult time reading at the beginning of the year, but he has worked so hard. And this little boy can now read me uh, scripture out of his Bible. Amen. Amen. Jackson, he wanted to be the first person to finish his book. He was ready to go. But while we worked on it, we started going over our class rules, and one of our rules was to use kind words. And so he got to where he wanted to put his book aside and start helping his friends. And then Desiree is our little quiet one, and she would just sit and listen but she got to where she would be the first to raise her hand and ask questions and answer questions. So a lot of this stuff happens that y'all don't see back there. You, uh, I know y'all know we play games and stuff, but a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes. Um, so with that being said, I, I want to thank God for this opportunity, this being my second year with, so again, another wonderful group of children. And so I'll go ahead and start handing out the awards. So I do have quite a few, like I said, that aren't here, so that's the stack over there. Um, but we'll first start off, let's see. I've got Miss Desiree. She completed her book. So there's your book, sweetheart. And here's your certificate. And then she earned pretty much quite almost all of her badges. Good. Good job, sweetie. And then we have Mr. Axel. Oops. He completed his book. Axel earned almost all of his badges. And he had very outstanding attendance. He didn't get perfect attendance, but he only missed one day. So I'm very proud of him. And then finally, we have Jackson. He completed his book. And Jackson got all of his awards and his Sunday school award, which means he attended Sunday school for at least 16 weeks, and he attended Sunday school every Sunday. I don't go and every Sunday. Jackson had perfect attendance. Good. So all of the others, I had two participation awards, uh, Leslie and Jose. Um, I'm not quite sure if they moved or not. Um, and then all of my other ones earned at least one badge. So I'm very proud of them, and I'm very blessed to have had the opportunity to teach second grade for a second year. Thank you. All right, so we have our third grade class next. If they can come on up. We had Miss Angie Smith and Miss Bonnie. Uh, we also have Miss Crystal. She helped out some uh, throughout the year. Um, so we'll have them come on up. Well, 
I was thankful to get to help at Master Club again this year, and this was a very good group of boys and girls. They wanted to learn. They had fun with game time, snack time, but when it came down to doing Bible time, our book time, they were serious. They wanted to learn about learn about God, help their friends that maybe got a little bit behind. So they were they were really joy this year. And most of all, I want to thank. Miss Bonnie for her help, and um, without her I couldn't have done it. She um, she taught some with Bible time, so um, she was a real blessing. So I, I really appreciate Miss Bonnie this year. We had um, three that completed their whole book, and so we'll start with um, David. He completed his whole book. He has his certificate for completion, and then we have Angel. He completed his whole book, and Sadie completed her whole book, and these other young ladies and men have gotten very close. They may have just come close and just missed by one badge, but they worked really hard. And Brianna, and then Gabriel, and Avea. We, have, we averaged about um, around 9 to 10 every night, so we're still missing a few, but I'm um, very proud of these boys and girls and all their hard work. So, thank you. All right, so now we'll have our uh, junior girls come up. Uh, they were led by Miss, uh, Miss Connie, Miss Kathy, and Miss Tiffany. This is our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade uh, girls class. They're separated out throughout the, the, the other times, but then they, they combine and, and come into one class in our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. We have had another great year in Master Club. Um, I appreciate everyone who helps. Um, I know it makes a big hole in attendance in the auditorium, so I appreciate my husband allowing so many to leave the auditorium and go to help in Master Club. Um, I appreciate Tiffany Petty being a help and teaching and um, working with the girls, and Kathy Harris has helped I, I couldn't even tell you how many years and I appreciate her so much she's the one she's the glue that keeps us all together uh, she keeps it organized that's not me she keeps it all organized so we've had a great year we've had probably eight or nine every night this year um, we've got a very low number tonight some of them weren't able to make it um, but we've had really good girls really uh, girls that have really, really, really wanted to to do their work, to learn about the Lord, to um, to learn what they need to be as a Christian. And I appreciate that. And I, my heart's desire is that these girls would take what they've learned and apply it to their lives and be a light to those around them and show their show their Christian love and their Christian testimony to their families and to their friends, and that's what we've encouraged them all year to do. Um, they have to work really hard in order to get all of the badges um, to get their crown. We have, how many badges do we have? We have several badges. This one is the biggest we have, like seven. Yeah, this, uh, their gold crown is the hardest one, and um, so they have to earn several badges to complete their book to get their crown. Um, so we have two that completed their books and uh, two of the fourth and fifth graders that completed their books and got their crowns. And they're not here tonight, but I want to call their names out. Addison Chastain and um, Allison Hernandez worked very hard and they got their books, their badges, their crowns. And then um, in fourth grade, Isabella Payne started later in the year, so she was not able to complete the whole book. She worked really hard trying to catch up and finish, but she earned all of the badges that she could earn 
while she was here. So I appreciate these girls so much. And then uh, the sixth grade, Kathy's going to come and present the sixth grade awards because she worked with them. I've been doing this for over 20 years, and this is such a sweet group of girls, so faithful, hardworking. Some of them didn't get to come all the time, but we actually had about seven or eight sixth graders, which I've been doing this for so long, I don't ever remember having that many sixth graders. Usually by then, they're kind of over it, you know, but these girls have been so faithful this year, and I'm so grateful for each one of them. We have several that are not here, but the first one that has earned her crown, her gold crown, actually there's 10 badges that you earn for your gold crown, which is the biggest one that we have other than the platinum crown. And that's Michaela Keeley. Michaela has been so faithful. I don't think she's missed at all. I don't do attendance with these girls, but I don't think she's missed at all this year. She's so faithful. And then we have Amaya Lopez. Amaya came later in the year. She did not complete all of the badges to get her gold crown, but she came really close and she worked up to the very last minute. She worked really hard and she has such a sweet attitude. She's been really a blessing and this is the first year we've had her in Master Club, but she's been such a blessing to us. And then we have our three year girls that have been here the whole time, very faithful. We have Natalie Mercedes. Natalie kept us entertained all year. We never knew what she was going to say or what she was going to do, but she was always here, always faithful, faithful to Sunday school too, and we're going to really miss her. We love her to death. Amen. And then, bless her heart, we had Tammy Harris. <laughs> this is my first grandchild that I've actually had in class, and I was kind of mean to her. I stayed on her all year long, but honestly, I didn't have to do it. She, she's very mature for her age. She does... I, I can say that because she's my granddaughter, but she really is very mature for her age and she did everything and she finished early and she helped the other girls that were a little bit behind catch up. And Tanley was able to get all of her crowns. She had her brown, bronze, silver, gold, and she earned 15 extra badges to earn her platinum crown, which is the highest award you can get in Master Club. Hey. Very proud of all of them. So, as they come down, we'll have the junior boys come on up, fourth, fifth, and fifth, and sixth grade boys. <clears throat> and they're led by Brother Chris, Brother Hunter, and Brother Matthew. They shared the teaching duties and, and uh, bouncer duties and <laughs> whatever kind of duties they needed all year long. Okay, this at this level they're fun. They they're they're uh, they're energetic, and uh, but we've had some really smart kids this year. Before I, before I start about on our class, um, I just want to thank all the people that helped get a lot of these kids here. Uh, Brother Mark has been faithful to drive uh, just about every week. And let me tell you something: Wednesday night, if you hadn't re rode the bus on a Wednesday night after church, you're missing out on a good time. Okay, let me tell you. Um, and then I had Brother Rock and, and Brother Ben help bounce. That's all they do. They're about bouncers. You know, you just try not to throw them out the window, but make sure they stay seated. But it's, um, <clears throat> it's a blessing to have people like that that you can, you can count on. And, 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 you know, you got uh, Miss Rose and, uh, and the girls filling in when they need it. Um, Brother Rex, let me tell you something. Solid. And he helped a lot with the city. He helped when I, when I needed him. Um, but it takes people that love the Lord and love these children in order to, um, to make this happen. A lot of these children ride the bus. Uh, parents work a lot. There's all kinds of excuses why the, the parents can't bring their children. And, and I'm glad that we can offer this because I love every one of these children, no matter how bad they are. Um, we have to... <laughs> We have to love them. No, we don't have to. It, it, if, you, it, if, you, if you pattern your life after Jesus, um, he went for the worst ones, and, and they were open. And our church is so loving 
Um, when it comes to children, that's one of the reasons that, that um, I'm, I'm blessed to uh, have grown up in this church most of my life. Um, but I just want to bring that out about the bus ministry. Um, you know, if it wasn't for Brother John and Brother Adam, you know, I'm glad that Brother Adam's here tonight. I learned a lot from them. Um, we, especially Brother Adam and I, got into some stuff. I was like, what? Um, really? This stuff happens? And it does, but, uh, you know, I appreciate them. I appreciate the ones that, that were before, before us on the bus ministry. And I don't want to leave out the city route because I know it was real chaotic, and, and Kevin and, 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 um, and Blaine did a really good job with that, and, and others as well, but I know those two stood out. Um, I know Miss Aaron probably helped a lot as well. But I just want to take a second uh, for the, to, to, to say those things because, and, and you know, Brother Travis and Miss Leslie helped a lot out there as well. Um, but I just want to take a minute and, and thank all those people that, that made a lot of this possible. And then, you know, Miss Janet, nobody ever talks about Miss Janet, <laughs> but she's kind of in the, in the wings, making sure all this, this stays together. And, and, you know, of course, Alex stepping up and, and really doing a great job, uh, with, with this ministry. Um, but saying all that, we're going to get to our boys, but I, I really appreciate our brother Hunter. He, he worked with us a little bit last year. Uh, on and off, I think, well, he's, he was here last year, but he's really stepped up this year. Um, and, and, and Brother Matthew as well taught some great lessons. I was excited to see it. Um, and, and, and Hunter's really grew a lot this year, and I just really appreciate them. And, and of course, Alex and, and, um, and Brother Ben helped teach as well. So we've had plenty of, of, of good influences for these young men. But just like everybody else's, we're losing a lot of these children to the world, um, to bad stuff. And we have fun in our class, believe me. But when the Bible comes out, it's serious. Isn't that right, boys? Right? We don't play. They sing Hurricane Chris a couple times. But we, but we, have, a good, we, we have a good time in the Lord. And these things that we're teaching them are so important because you don't, you don't know what these kids are facing nowadays with electronics. And for that little bit of time every week, we do take it serious. Um, but to say all that, um, who's, the, who's the first one? Gio, Gio Dios. I've had him the whole, uh, the whole time that he's been. He rides my bus. And I really appreciate his faithfulness. Uh, he has grown so much. Let me tell you something. This kid was causing trouble all the time on my bus, and then all of a sudden he's one of my leaders. And I'm so proud of him to be on the bus, and I'm, I'm excited to see what the Lord does in his life. We've got him for another year, um, and I'm excited to see what the Lord does in his life. Uh, the next one's Brother uh, or Oliver, Oliver Harris. Um, <clears throat> he's, he's blood. He's one of my, my, my family members, and I'm, I'm proud of him. I remember we gave, I told him, I said, you wanna, you, anybody want to step up and give a story? And, man, he stood up and told the best Bible story I've ever heard, and um, I was impressed with him, and I'm just proud to have him. I got him for a little bit, a while as well. And then Daniel. Daniel don't say a lot, but when he says stuff, it's, it's groundbreaking. No, he's, no, I'm just kidding. But he, uh, he, he, all these boys, you know, it's not a thing, it's not a big thing. You know, boys don't like to read, okay, just at the end of the day. But all these kids, they're just, who wants to read this? They're all raising their hands. Um, uh, especially Carson, I know this is not, it's not in order, uh, but Carson is a, a very intelligent kid, and he, he's ready to read all the time, and um, I'm glad we got him this year. I was excited to see him come up, um, but I'm, I'm really impressed with, uh, with how Carson, um, I guess, uh, adapted to our class, and um, then I want to, I Gio Lopez, he came late. He came later in the year, but two weeks ago, he got saved. Amen. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's what it's about. A lot of these boys have been saved in this ministry. Uh, and, and praise the Lord, I've, I've, um, I've, I've been able to be a part of that, and there's just, it can't be explained. Uh, the, the amount of joy that you see, um, the amount of joy I experience, but just the change in them. And, and it's just, it's amazing. It increases my faith, but... Um, I was so proud of him, and I'm going to tell you, I, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it. Last Wednesday, I was, I was 
devil's on me, okay? And it happens. I know, I know what Brother Wayne knows what I'm talking about, Jason. People that are, that with, you're in the front lines a lot of times, you get, you get tagged. It's bad. And I was telling Brother Mark, I was like, man, will you just pray? I don't know if I can pray before we leave today. And he prayed. And um, Gio, he was the first one we picked up, and he handed me a note. And it was like all of a sudden, all those battles that I'd been fighting that day <clears throat> just lifted. Please. And it was to the effect of, of, of thanking me for picking him up and thank me, thanking me for leading him to the Lord and thanking me for other things. And it was just so encouraging. Um, and I needed that at that time. And, and I, I just appreciate that. I, I just want to brag on him for a minute and, and brag on the Lord. He knew exactly what I needed at that time. And he... And it's just impressive to see a child this age just respond to the obedience of the Lord. That's right. And I was, uh, it, it, man, I'm telling you, it really, really encouraged me at a, at a time when I needed it. And I appreciate that. You know, it meant a lot to me, buddy. I told him, I said, well, I'd rather have this than a million dollars. And I meant it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we, well, there's a few that, that, that couldn't make it tonight. Zayden Johnson, um, he couldn't make it. He was pretty faithful. Uh, and then Johnny, what is that, babe? Stop. Salesa, Salinas, Johnny Salinas. He came with uh, my wife, brought him, um, but they couldn't make it tonight. And we were glad that they got to be a part. We hope next year that they'll be a little more faithful and they can be here on awards night. Um, Dominic uh, Garcia came a little late. He's not here tonight, um, but uh, he, he came a little late. And we were glad to have him. Hopefully next year we'll, we'll be losing him. He's going to the, the youth department. And we'll follow it with him and try to get him there. But this one I wish was really here tonight. Everybody knows Caden, uh, Caden Torres. He is going up next year. He's going to be in, in the youth department. And I wish he was really here because he is a spark. Uh, he, and, and, and he has been so faithful over the years. Um, and he just couldn't make it tonight. But we appreciate that. Um, and, and that's it. That's all we got. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they're going to go on back to their seat. I just have a few <clears throat> few more people that I wanted to say a special thank you to. One is uh, Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson was our uh, our game director uh, this year. He, uh, he kind of was forced into that role, I guess. <laughs> uh, I forced him into that role, but uh, we worked together, and so... Uh, uh, I guess I always tell him my name's on the building, so sometimes he has to do <laughs> do some things that I say. That wasn't what I used for that, but uh, I, I messed with him all year about that. But Ben was a big a big help to us, and I'll, uh, he was one of the kids' favorite people. When they got to see him, they knew it was game time, and so uh, they enjoyed enjoyed seeing him. Then also, Brother Chris already uh, talked about Miss Janet. Um, really. I don't feel like I'm the master club director. I feel like my mother and Miss Janet are the master club co-directors, and so they, they kind of keep everything together. Miss Janet, uh, she'll be texting me, you know, throughout the, the year, and she's like, hey, don't you remember it's this night tonight? I'm like, no, but I do now. Thank you. And so, uh, so she keeps everything together. My mother <clears throat> will come to me at work all the time <laughs> and asking me what kid earned what badge. I'm like, I don't know. My bag's in the, in the, in the other car. It's, uh, it, you know, uh, but it, it ends up, uh, these people are what make this thing happen. It's not me. I don't do a whole lot other than just, you know, uh, maybe fill in here and there. Um, but, and then, uh, one other person, Sadie, uh, was going to come up and help me. Um, where is Sadie? Sadie, come up here. Well, she, she just went out. Doggone it. Uh, but Sadie was going to come up here and help me Miss Leslie Trumbull, uh, you can take that back there to Brother Travis, and hopefully he'll make sure that it gets to, <laughs> to Miss Leslie. But Miss Leslie was able to. Uh, <clears throat> we ran out of these banners the, that they got in the in the junior department, and uh, she, uh, on her own accord, made these banners for us, which I think they look great. They look beautiful, um, and the, these are things that once they get to sixth grade, we'll keep up with them, you know, throughout their their three years in the junior department, but. Uh, they get to, they get to take these home, and I think that's a that's a pretty cool thing. I wish I had something like that from when I was a kid. Uh, but again, I wanted to say thank you to everyone uh, for praying for the Master Club program. Um, oh yeah, I have one more. Sorry, 
Mom, see, that's why my mother is so important. She's over here mouthing stuff to me. Okay, I do have two other awards that I need to give. Let me, let me get her to come up here. Mom. The real Master Club director. Um, <clears throat> so, we had two young ladies, um, and we would have had a, one of the young men, but he was like, what, one or two badges shy? Uh, Caden was maybe one or two badges shy of earning his Triple Crown Award. But we have um, the Triple Crown is when they've been here all three years. They earn, earn all three, their bronze, silver, and gold crowns, which is, uh, like I said before, this curriculum is not an easy one. They do a Life of Christ uh, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, they do a Bible study, one, two, and three. They do a missionary journey. They follow uh, uh, the Apostle Paul's missionary uh, journeys and, and all these different things. They learn about all this stuff. And for them to get all three crowns, it takes faithfulness for them to be here uh, all the time and hard work and dedication. Uh, because sometimes you, you would get behind. And, and uh, for them to, to be able to, um, to earn this uh, award is, is quite impressive in my opinion. Uh, and so... For our Triple Crown Award, we have Natalie Mercedes. Let's give her a hand. All right, and then, um, yeah, we'll get, if I can get somebody that's got a camera, everybody's got a camera, uh, somebody that can, uh, <laughs> let's see somebody grab a big camera and come out here. Uh, but we'll have someone come take a picture of this here in just a moment. Then um, the only other uh, thing that we're able to, um, to award someone with is the Ambassador Award. And the Ambassador Award means that they've earned both their gold, silver, or all four, their gold, silver, and bronze crown. And then they also went and, uh, and earned their platinum uh, crown. And the platinum crown is something that they can't do in class. So we have our, our uh, year is scheduled out by how many lessons we have. We had one extra week. Uh, this year that we were able to um, have some kind of a catch-up day, uh, but uh, if they if they got if they were here all week or all year, uh, they could earn their triple crown. They had to go above and beyond to earn their platinum crown. And we had one young lady who I'm very proud of and is kind of close to me uh, that earned that, and that's Miss Tanley Harris. And they decided to wear matching shoes tonight. Isn't that great? All right, let's give them a hand. Again. And again, I want to say thank you to everyone for, uh, for praying for us and for, uh, for allowing our, our, our ministry, this ministry, to happen. Um, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks. All right, wasn't that good? Amen. We're going to have the special uh, in song by the children that just sung it. And so that was a good special. Amen. I was going to have you stand up and uh, sing Amazing Grace. But I realized that was the longest awards ceremony we've ever had. Uh, and your attention span is gone. And so I'm just going to, I mean the adults, not the children. They can, they can take it. But that's good. That's good. That's more children, more awards. I love it. Don't you? Amen. Thank God for children. And I'm going to tell you something. The future of our church is in good hands if these kids keep getting saved. And if they'll, they'll grow and they'll not just earn a badge but they'll earn God's approval by studying the word of God every day and every moment of their life obey God and that's a great lesson and he should be the master of their life amen so that's your message and I'm going to conclude uh, just in closing uh, just a few verses out of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 2 Corinthians chapter 1 this morning I covered the whole book of 1 Corinthians, and we discussed, or we didn't discuss nothing, I preached on uh, how divided it was in chapter 1, verse 12, 
In chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, while you're finding 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, people quit growing. And in chapter 4, they were critical of Paul, the apostle Paul. And then there was fornication among them. Uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 6, verse 1, there was no forgiveness. They wouldn't forgive each other. A bunch of people letting grudges hold them. And then uh, chapter 8, verse 1, they were full of pride. They were puffed up. And uh, chapter 13, verse 1, uh, love wasn't there. They did not love others and love each other and love God. And then chapter 14, verse 4, they edified themselves through tongue speaking. And they had gifts that were supposed to be important like preaching, but they wanted the gifts where they could stand up and be a big shot and be uh, somebody and it was all full of pride. And Paul should have wrote a letter, and he should have had this thought. If you're still there when you get this letter, please write back. Because it was a mess. I mean, it was terrible what was described in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And that's what will happen when you get carnal, or you get uh, fleshly, or you get uh, in, uh, just live on your own power and strength. But I want to show you the text tonight, and I'm going to preach 10 minutes. That's going to be a challenge. 10 minutes on verse 7, chapter 1 of 2 Corinthians. I started with point 1. I'll give you point 2, and that's all. And we'll just have a series out of this. Amen? I never get uh, upset about uh, not having enough time because I just preach at the next service. Amen? I know where I'm going. So let's stand in all the Word of God. Y'all been standing a long time, and, or sitting a long time. And I'm so proud of these children, so proud of the, you uh, teachers. I'm going to tell you something. You'll learn three times as much if you'll teach. Because you've got to stay ahead of these kids. Amen? Number two is you need to realize God placed you in this church with gifts that you need to exercise. And God has blessed us with so many people. You ought to have seen the volunteers for Vacation Bible School. Thrills my heart every year how many people volunteer for that one week of just reaching children. So it's a blessing. But I want you to see uh, ch verse 7. It says, And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of this suffering, and that suffering wasn't a pain in the heel or the tooth, it was suffering for Jesus' sake, that we're being persecuted. So shall ye be also of the consolation. Now let me just give you what I'm, this verse means to me. It means I know you're going to make it. I know you're going to make it. And I know the reason you're going to make it because of the consolation. Now, what does that mean, children? That means God will comfort you when you're down. And God will comfort you when you're hurt. And God will never leave you, never forsake you. And he wants to be with you in a very personal way because he's the God of all comfort. You may be seated. I'm going to pray. Preach the 720. We're going to go home and eat. Father, thank you for these children. Thank you for the teachers. Thank you for the bus directors and captains and drivers. Everybody that made these nine months such a blessing and such a help. And I pray, dear God, that you'd help us now to uh, realize, God, that you are so wonderfully uh, using these children and using uh, these teachers to praise your name and exalt you, and Lord, to help them love you as much as you love them. Lord, thank you, God, for this message now. Help us to summarize it, because we don't have time for a long one. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, i got time to preach it, but I can tell by looking at you, I ain't got time to listen to it. So I'm going to lay it on the line and do it very quick. I want you to notice seven things, and I'm going to give you just two. Number one, I know that you're going to make it, because God's comfort is sufficient. Look at verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Listen to me, children and parents and everybody in this place. God is a God of all comfort. I want to say this. I know you're going to make it with God's help and with his spirit in your heart. And folks, number one point is tell it to Jesus and leave it there. No comfort in any other name. No comfort in just being a church member. No comfort in just being religious. Matter of fact, you'll be very uncomfortable because you never can live up to it. 
but you're comforted in the Holy Spirit in your heart. He's called the comforter in John chapter 14. He's called the comforter in John chapter uh, 16. The devil's looking to discourage someone in this room. And he's definitely looking to discourage leadership in this church. Amen? And I know what Chris was saying. I experienced it quite often in 46 years of pastoring and 50 years of preaching. Sometimes the devil cannot jump on your back. Amen? And weigh you down. But I thank God we got a God of all comfort. God of all comfort. Number one, I want you to put it down that God is the comforter. The Holy Spirit comforts us. Look at verse 4. It says, Who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them also which are in trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. This morning I, I titled it The Stewardship of Comfort. If God comforts you, He wants you to be comforting others. If God has encouraged you any time in your life, He wants you to be an encouragement to somebody else. You're little missionaries now that, that say, you go home and share the gospel with your parents and tell them that you're going to be an obedient child and even take out the trash while you're smiling, amen, or whatever God uh, wants you to do to prove to them that you are different because you got saved in the, in the master club. Then number two, I see that uh, his deliverance will prove sufficient. I know you're going to make it because God's the deliverer. I want you to look at verse um, 10 in closing. I say that in closing, so I'll close, amen, But because um, I could preach all night, but uh, you couldn't listen all night. But anyway, look at this, verse 10. It's, I can't even listen to myself all night, but look at verse 10. It says, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that, ye will, that he will yet deliver us. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. That's a lot of deliverance, but that's, that's what salvation means. We're delivered from the bondage of sin. We're delivered from past tense, the penalty of sin. We're delivered present tense from the dominion of sin. I'm gonna tell you, the devil wants to make every one of you like puppets. And he wants you to uh, go by his instructions and by his power. Is this thing on, brother? Amen. Is it on? I think it is. Amen. Give me a little more monitor. And I want you to know that he has delivered you and saved you for his, for his glory and by his grace. Amen. Isn't it wonderful that you were saved, but you're saved three tenses, past tense, present tense, and praise God, one day, if you're saved now, you're going to be saved from the presence of sin. You're going to be in heaven. There'll be no more sin. There'll be no more battles. Paul had fought great battles. Paul had fought uh, terrible situations. It's, it's described in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But I want to tell you something. One of the things that broke his heart the most was that his church was so carnal and so wicked and so divided and, and there was no unity and there was no love and there was pride and all kinds of things were going on in the Apostle Paul's church. So he wrote back and said, my hope of you is steadfast. He said, I know you're going to make it. Isn't that good? Folks, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how low you might get, no matter how discouraged you might get, his deliverance will prove sufficient. Past tense, folks, he delivers us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. And you're saved present tense, past tense, and future tense. He delivered you. And the Bible says in verse 10, doth deliver. That means every day with Jesus, God is with you. He's your shepherd. He's, he, he'll help you. He will pick you up. He'll restore your soul in the valley. He's just a wonderful God, present tense, and then future tense. Look at the last phrase of verse 10. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. See, folks, they were going through a lot of tribulation, a lot of problems, a lot of suffering. I mean, terrible suffering. Not just physical, I mean emotional and spiritual. And folks, uh, the devil was uh, trying to stop this church and he did a pretty good job in 1 Corinthians. But praise God, 2 Corinthians, business picks up. Because these people took this letter and said, thank God I have a comforter. And thank God I have a deliverer. And thank God I don't have to live in the flesh. 
I can live by the grace of God. What is the grace of God? The grace of God is a gift to enable you to live beyond yourself. Amen. We all need the grace of God, don't we? Amen. We need to, and the grace of God gives you grace to be saved, but the grace of God sustains you to be victorious. Amen. Hey, friend, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about that we're triumphant uh, in the Lord. It says, now thanks be unto God, verse 14, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. And that was a picture of a, of a king coming to the, back to the village or to the, to the palace or to the fort or wherever they came back to. And he was riding a white horse and he had all the ones he captured in chains and, and they were cheering and excited because it was, it, was it was called a king's triumphant. And folks, we should be triumphant every day because of the grace of God. Amen. The grace of God delivers you from being just you and getting even and being mean and being arrogant, <clears throat> being ugly. How many is ugly? Don't raise your hand. Don't look at the person next to you. Uh, being just you, human. God gives you grace to be godly. God gives you grace to love like Jesus. God gives you grace to say no to Satan and say yes to the Lord. God gives you grace to stop thinking about your little old name and start thinking about his name. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. The grace of God delivers us from the devil. He delivers us from the dominion of sin. But I'll tell you what I love about grace. He delivers us from ourselves. Don't y'all need that? I need that. I just, I just thank God for the grace of God. We're going to stand a minute and sing Amazing Grace. I got one minute, so I want to give you a true story, um, children. I want you to listen real closely. Y'all been real good. A couple of you sacked out, and I understand that. But adults do that to me too, amen. On the morning of a Sunday, November 8, 1987, an Irishman, Gordon Wilson, took his daughter, Maria, to a parade in the town of or Skilla, insist, I don't know what it is, uh, a place in Northern Ireland. And as Wilson and his 20-year-old beautiful daughter stood beside the brick wall waiting for the English soldiers and police to come marching by, a bomb planted by the RA terrorists exploded from behind them. And a brick wall tumbled on both of them and many others. The blast instantly killed half a dozen people, pinned Gordon and his beautiful daughter beneath several feet of bricks. And Gordon's shoulders and arms were injured, unable to move. Gordon felt someone take hold of his hand. It was his daughter, Maria. Is that you, Dad? She asked. Yes, Maria, Gordon answered. He heard several people begin screaming. Are you all right? Gordon asked his daughter. Yes, she said. But then she too began to scream. As he held her hand again and again, he asked her if she was all right. And each time she said yes. And finally Maria said this, Daddy, I love you very much. Those were her last words. Four hours later, she died in the hospital of severe spinal and brain injuries. Later that evening, a BBC reporter requested permission to interview Gordon Wilson. And after Wilson described what had happened, the reporter asked, how do you feel about the guys who planted the bomb? And He said, I bear them no will, ill will. Wilson replied, I bear them no grudge. Bitter talk is not going to bring Maria Wilson back to life. I shall pray tonight and every night that God will forgive them. In the months that followed, many people asked Wilson, who later became a senator in the Republic of Ireland, how he could say such a thing and how he could forgive such a monstrous act. And Wilson explained, I was hurt. I had just lost my daughter. But I was, wasn't angry because Maria's last words to me, words of love, had put me on a plane 
of love. I received God's grace through the strength of his love for me to forgive. For years after the tragedy, Gordon Wilson continued to work for peace in Norland Island. Love can do miracles. But let me just say this. I know you're going to make it. I know our church is going to make it. Children, I pray you have a good summer and that you'll make it. But the reason you're going to make it is because his grace is sufficient. Amen. His comfort is sufficient. His deliverance and salvation and sanctification, all these fancy words, means this. He sustains you. He helps you when you can't help yourself. Amen. If a little girl can influence his daddy to love the ones that killed her, I think we can forgive each other. I think we can treat each other with edification and, and, and comfort and, and, and encouragement. That's what a Christian ought to do. Say amen. I believe we can forgive each other. Folks, I'm going to tell you why. I know you're going to make it. For our hope is steadfast knowing as you're partakers of suffering. That means d terrible persecution. So shall you also be of the consolation. Where God leads, there is sometimes some trials and troubles, but he never leaves us alone because his grace, his comfort, and his deliverance is wonderful. As sure as he saved you, he can help you today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this night of acknowledging these children's hard work. And I pray they've done it not just for a badge, but God for you. And to learn more about the word and, and to love and respect their leaders, but also love and respect their Lord. Lord, thank you for the ones that's got saved. They've been delivered. And God, they're going to be delivered. They're going to, in the future, be delivered. As this verse says, past tense, present tense, and future tense, you're the deliverer. And God, you're the God of all comfort. But God, help us to be good stewards or good managers uh, of this treasure of comfort and comfort others. God, help us to never let the Christian life be selfish. But God, help, help us, Lord, to know that we've got a place of service but we got a place of forgiveness. we got a place of love and edification because with the comfort you comfort us, we can comfort others. Lord, what I'm praying is help us never get over being saved. God, help us never get over being saved. Help us, God, never to get over where you found us, where we could be today, right in the middle of hell. God, help us to be a blessing and help. And Lord, I know you're going you're gonna to help us make it. But I want to say this, and I know it's the truth. If we're not saved, we're not going to make it. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how many accolades you have, no matter how many rewards you get. If you're not saved, you ain't going to make it. You're not going to make it to heaven. You're not going to make it through this whole wicked world because you'll not have the comforter, the Spirit of God in your life. Lord, if there's anyone that's lost tonight, Please save them.